Waking up to a prediction of how your day will turn out is a blessing you don't want to miss out on. Introducing Serious Joy, a predictive astrology service that predicts your thoughts and helps with your feelings throughout the day. You can also log into our website to discover hundreds of videos, personal astrology reports, and like-minded community forums. Or listen to the Daily Astrology Pep Talk podcast, hosted by Christopher Witecki. Sign up for your first month for only $3.99 today. Hello and welcome to Namaste Today. I'm your host, a practicing spiritual life coach, a psychic astrologer, and the sensei to Sirius Troy. My name is Christopher Wateki. Welcome to my spiritual dojo, Namaste. Well, my friends, we are now halfway into the sun in Gemini, and we're at the start of June. And what this means is we are now launching the story we were born to live. I'm calling this a genuine June because I think this is the month when the genuine story that we've been working on for six full months starts to come to the surface. Up until now, we've been working internally on this story. And I believe the transition actually began last December when we had a new moon solar eclipse at 12 degrees Sagittarius in early December. That was the launch of what I call the story we were born to live, the new narrative, the new direction that we were going to take in day-to-day life. And this also began the process of separating from the story we were born to. And we had several 12 degree new moons. We had one in December at 12 degrees. We had one in January at 12 degrees, February at 12 degrees, March at 12 degrees. And then come April Fool's Day, we had a new moon at 11 degrees. That was when we began to internalize this story and make it an internal realization of our truth. And we began to become, because step 11 is to become the energy, we started to become this story. Then through Aries, we started to change our behavior based on the story. And then at the end of Aries on April 30th, we had the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus at 10 degrees, which was the manifestation of this story. So us now manifesting it into full effect inside of ourself. So the reason why this is an interesting month and a genuine month is because now we are at six months, a six month uh, departure from that first new moon solar eclipse. And what that means is that Now that the sun is in Gemini and the earth is in Sagittarius, the earth in Sag is manifesting that solar eclipse where the sun was in December. So we're seeing the full realization now at the six month point, which basically happened at 12 degrees. So when we hit 12 degrees, which was literally on Friday, June 3rd, when we hit uh, 12 degrees, that was when we were the full uh, opposition of that new moon solar eclipse in December. And the point when we were now fully realizing that story. So I think it's going to be a genuine June because now I think we're going to genuinely start to live what this story is and start to see the truth of what this story is. And I think up until now, it's been extremely murky. It's been difficult to separate because it's been energetic. It's been vibrational with Aquarius. It's been our behavior with Aries. It's been super spiritual and intuitive with Pisces. And I believe that we've done a lot of clearing also of the old karmic story, which has been also very confusing as well. So June is when things get a lot more clear, a lot more clear as to what your story is going to be inside of yourself and how that's going to play in the world. And then by the end of the month, really feeling emotionally and intuitively what that story is uh, from an emotional perspective with the new moon in cancer. In fact, the two lunar events this month really sort of play out that genuine principle. We have a full moon on June 14th. And this full moon on June 14th is us uh, having a full moon at 23 degrees Sagittarius and 23 is the grandmaster degree of Gemini. So this means it's a purebred grandmaster Gemini realization with a full moon in Sag. This is a genuine full moon that I think will bring out the truth of our story and start to reveal what our story will be out in the world and out in public. So I think it's a very it's genuine because it's grandmaster. And then at the end of the month, we have a new moon on June 28th. And this new moon is at seven degrees cancer. And the reason why this is going to be incredibly powerful is because this new moon actually has an accompaniment of an array of sevens. We have seven different planets at that time at net seven, the sun and moon being two of them. So we come into the genuine spiritual story in this new moon at the end of the month. So June is going to be really us unveiling what our truth is and allowing that truth to come forward and for us to bring out our genuine truth of our our new story. And now from this point, start to live the story we were born to live. And I think through this point forward between now and December, 
there's still the story you were born to that you have to sort of uh, pass by and negate. So there's still that story where you will have, let's say, some of the old themes come up and you'll have to realize I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going there anymore. But I don't think we're coming from the place of the karma or coming from the place of the situation. Uh, we're now coming from this new story. And we're trying to live this new story. And June is when it genuinely happens. So as we move into the month, let's first just talk about last week. Last week was a doozy, I have to say. I mean, really, May never ceased to amaze me as far as how intense it actually was. So the wrap up of May was incredibly intense. Uh, it was energetically what I call metaphysical May. It was the month of starting to manifest the spiritual energies of the new story into reality. What I didn't realize was would be that this was the final test of a lot of the old story and the old karmic story as well. We had to pass by that old story. We had to see the story and decide to move away from the story. On top of that, we had Mercury retrograde during Metaphysical May, which I thought was a very foggy Mercury retrograde. It was one of the most unfocused Mercury retrogrades I've ever had as far as being able to be articulate and be able to speak clearly and to speak my mind. I found myself in all different places energetically, having a hard time focusing. And the eclipses were incredibly intense. The, the one on April 30th was pretty intense, but that full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio was ultimately the doozy. And that was when we drew the line. That was the final line between the old spiritual story we were living and the new story we were born to live. So metaphysical May, I found to be pretty intense, mostly because it was, I think, the wrap up of the old story. When I first analyzed that month at the beginning of the year, I was assuming it would be the beginning of the new story and that it would all be about the new, but I failed to realize that so much of it was sort of a final test of the old. And I think that final test played out in through last week. Last week, I called it launching a new attitude. And that was because we had a new moon at nine degrees on Monday. That new moon, I have to say, was like I predicted, pretty intense. It was a step nine new moon, which is ego action energy. New moons are typically quiet and they're very sort of open because the sun and moon comes together. You're sort of open and you're tender and you're vulnerable. And in that tender vulnerability of planting a new seed, we had the aggressive Martian energy. And the intention of the new moon was to move forward now and take action uh, with our new attitude with ourselves. So last week we were launching this new attitude with ourselves, and that meant to employ the new thinking and let go of the old thinking. And as I said, May did not cease to surprise because the entire week I found to be very revved up energetically. Mercury was still retrograde for the whole week. So there was a lot of tests of our mindset and questions about our future and questions about our direction. In fact, I found myself questioning the future for mostly the entire week um, and still into the end of the week and when I'm taping this. So energetically, it was a big test. A big test to stay on point to the new story, to know the new story, to live the new story, and to not fall into the old story for the whole week. We had a couple of uh, uh, issues with Black Moon Lilith come up, which I really felt as well, Mars squaring Black Moon Lilith. And we also had, of course, um, Mercury station direct on Friday. And I have to say, as soon as Mercury station direct, I found my mind coming into much sharper perspective and my ability to really see um, and uh, clearly understand things that I was really foggy about up until then. So it turned out to be um, a very intense week. And then the day this show goes live, Saturn goes retrograde. So I can't say what it feels like, but I certainly felt tests of responsibility, like being tested on my responsibility or taking responsibility or tests on my taking authority in my life all the way up in that final moment there uh, before I taped this show and recorded this show. So last week was about launching a new attitude and we were committing to this new attitude. And by the end of the week, taking our attitude to a higher level. This week, um, we now continue with our new thinking and now we're going to commit to a new strategy. So this week is about thinking for a new strategy in life, committing to a new strategy. What we want to um, uh, strategize as far as how we're now going to move forward with this new thinking of ourself and now carry that thinking out into day-to-day -day life and making plans for day-to-day -day life. So this is us from this week that goes from step 14 until step 20, as far as the sun steps are concerned. And that is starting with the grandmaster idea on Sunday, this new idea of how you're gonna think of life and sort of embodying this new idea, this new attitude for life basically. And from this new attitude of life, day by day committing to a strategy that you intend to live and carry out. And ultimately, we commit to this strategy 
on Thursday. Thursday's when we commit at step 18. Um, when we commit on Wednesday, actually, on the hump day, and then on Thursday, we move forward with that new action, we move forward with that new attitude, and we move forward with that new commitment. Then Friday, we hold space. And then by Saturday, we're starting to feel the new future. So it's really about us thinking through our strategy going forward for this week, thinking through what we're going to uh, do for our attitude, our literal plans that we have in life. This could also be uh, moving forward finally with contracts and negotiations. I think a lot of things were held up with Mercury retrograde. So moving forward in that capacity as well. Uh, also moving forward with commi official communications and sharing things um, that we have been holding uh, back for whatever reason and wanting to now move forward with those with those communications. Maybe with Mercury retrograde, there was second guessing about what to think about certain things or uh, how to approach certain topics. So we, we sort of move forward intellectually where I think with Mercury retrograde prior to this, we were feeling really held up. Now we sort of uh, move forward in a strong minded, positive way I think it's going to feel positive uh, due to the other energies of the moon going on this week. And we now can positively start to plan with confidence because I think a lot of the up, upheaval and questioning of this prior year is finally starting to clear out. And we're starting to get some answers now of uh, what the correct direction is going to be and what the story really means. So we end up clarifying our thoughts about things, our plans about things, and we're ready to take those plans moving forward. That's the essence of what the heart is doing this week with the sun in Gemini. And I think, again, because we've been held up for the last six months starting to figure out, well, what's the story inside of me? What's not the story inside of me? I think now we're very clear what the story is and knowing what we can work with, we can now move forward with that story and make it manifest. The earth, of course, will also be from step 14 uh, Sagittarius to step 20 Sagittarius. And so we will also be manifesting at the same time a new story, a new narrative. And this is carrying that official story you're born to live to the next level. So now manifesting this story forward, which means that some of the questions as far as what the plot will be and what the twists and turns will be and, you know, um, what the outcome of certain questions will be, this all comes into I think manifestation and understanding this week. So we really will understand some of those plot points. Okay, so that is the sun in Gemini. Looking at this uh, week, a lot of the energy actually that's gonna unfold has to do with Taurus energy. We're still catching up to the Taurus energy from really last month. Um, that's because Mercury is still in Taurus this week. Mercury goes from step 26 to step 28 this week. So we move uh, in that capacity moving forward. Venus this week goes from step nine to step 16 this week. So we go from step nine to 16, which means that we open up with what we're going to start to accept about daily life. And by the end of the month, Venus, end of the week, excuse me, Venus crosses Uranus, which means we open up to innovating and um, manifesting a higher value in ourselves. So with the energy of Taurus, we have Mercury in the high degree saying, hey, Let's commit and move towards what we want to manifest in the high degrees of Taurus, our mind committing to what we want. Mercury's still in shadow until June 18th, by the way. But sort of now that we have this new story in place, now that we feel our genuine, authentic story moving forward, and we've mixed, we've come through what's the clarity of what that story is. Now with Mercury in the high degrees, we can go, okay, I'm going to commit to this new direction of what I want to manifest. And with the Venus moving into the mid degrees of Taurus, I can open up to what I'm worth. I can open up to what my manifest potential is um, and I can accept what it is. With Venus then conjoining Uranus at the end of the week, we then uh, realize that it's now time to take our manifestations higher and that we can go higher with our manifestation. So I think what, there's a lot of moving forward now with literal manifestation projects. These might be projects that again were on hold during the retrograde. These might have been projects where you were uncertain about how the outcome would be simply because you were still questioning what your story is or which way to go or aspects of your own self and what your character intends to be and what your character tends to do. And so I think one of the big themes of this week of our strategy is our manifestation strategy. And of course, Taurus is, um, you know, a semi sextile energy to the sun. And so the sun is really uh, semi sextiling that same vibration in Taurus, which means our thoughts and our plans are working in sync with our manifestation intentions. Now, the other aspect, of course, um, that's happening in Taurus is, of course, the nodes. And the nodes are um, energetically focusing now on us 
um, seeing the big picture of what our story is going to be with manifestation. I was looking for my notes there to see exactly where they were. Um, so in the big picture of things, we're still pointing to a, a new direction and a new story of where we think our big manifestation period is going to go. We're still working out what is the big picture of what this is going to turn out to be. And with the South Node in Scorpio, moving away from and letting go of certain boundaries or restrictions or certain ties that we had um, in existing uh, deals, perhaps alignments in companies or businesses, perhaps relationship alignments, these are still now starting to change and the boundaries around these areas are changing to free up for where we wanna move forward in the big picture of manifestation. So in the course of the week, uh, I think that we do a lot of uh, hard coded planning and strategizing of how certain projects are going to manifest in our life. And these would be projects you tend to materialize. These are projects that you tend to see into full, uh, full manifestation and full reality and unfold in a full scope of, of truth. So it's not like just an idea, it's a project. And it's probably something you've been working on for a long time. I will say at the end of the week, it looks like we come to a real understanding of what this manifestation project is going to be because at the end of the week mercury will try and pluto at 28 degrees and pluto is retrograde in capricorn at 28 degrees 28 is the grandmaster degree of taurus of manifestation so by the end of the week our mind has thought through and decided to commit to a new manifestation goal and with mercury trining pluto it means that that goal, whatever we're manifesting, is going to also be tied to us transforming our power in some area of life. I mute now to clear my throat. <laughs> so by the end of the week, I think not only have you worked through some manifestation project that you've probably been waiting to really see come together, but you come to a, a commitment to that manifestation project. And because Mercury trines Pluto, uh, retrograde, that commitment means that there will be a change of power or a change of authority. And that change of power or authority means that there will be a change of the plot. I think there'll be a change of what the story actually becomes and, uh, and, so, and what is involved with that story. So again, I really feel that this whole year has been a lot of hurry up and wait. I don't know if you felt the same way, but it's like we had all this karma coming forward. We had all these things to clear. We weren't sure what was going to happen. We weren't sure how things would turn out. There's been a lot of uncertainty, I think, because of all this um, inner work that we've been doing and this inner clearing we've been doing. And I would say this week is the first week where you really start to see that plot go forward, those manifestation projects move forward. Um, and, and literally your strategy come into gear, so to speak, come into alignment. Uh, also, I think connections to other people. That's the thing about Gemini. It's our connections to other people. So I think a lot of alignments with people and people aligning as a team and people aligning behind a project. I think this also happens as well this week that you'll see finally the team come together or finally the connection being made or finally the deal being done. So a lot of the important details that you've been waiting on for a long time and wondering about for a long time, I think come come into fruition. So the sun working with with the Taurus energy, I think is big. And again, Venus conjoining Uranus at the end of the week means that we now embrace this new innovation that we're going to do with ourselves, We embrace this new manifestation that we're going to do with ourselves. Uh, so we literally realize, okay, I'm not operating and manifesting on the same level. With Uranus at 16, 16 nets to a seven. So Uranus is innovating our story now to a new spiritual perspective and the new spiritual story. I literally see Uranus at 16, innovating us to the story we were born to live and out of the story we were born to. So um, I think that there's some sort of sense of completion that happens at the end of the week where you realize, wow, I am not on the same manifestation path that I was before. I really have made some progress. And again, I think this is the first time we really feel like we made progress probably for this entire year in these certain areas. So it's a, it's a positive week in that sense. Another area of this week has to do with our actual ego energy and our energy that goes forward. Um, we have Jupiter at four degrees Aries. Now that's a very powerful degree, degree of Uranus, degree of innovation. So Jupiter at four means that we are now believing that we belong treating ourselves in a different way. We belong responding to ourselves in a different way. We don't belong treating ourselves the same way. And I think this realization that we don't belong treating ourselves the same old way 
really fuels the story moving forward in a lot of ways because the character i think is feeling the genuine story you're feeling your genuine new self coming to the table and you're realizing that you cannot treat yourself the same way that you have treated yourself in the past so jupiter at four really calls for you to believe in this new self-treatment to believe in this new way of responding to yourself so when certain stories come up inside of yourself or perhaps themes from the story you were born to these themes come up now it's time to respond differently. I'm not going to I'm not going to respond to myself in worry. I'm not going to respond to myself um, second guessing anymore. I'm not going to respond to myself, you know, uh, doubting or doubting my, you know, my my actions. I'm going to actually respond now with an assumption, a new assumption that Jupiter four is this new assumption that you belong responding to yourself in a certain way uh, that is different than before. So you could say there's a revolution going on inside of ourself as, as far as how we respond to ourself this week and a, a new belief that I'm not going to treat myself the same old way because I'm not the same person I was. I'm not in the same story I was. I'm not in the same timeline that I was. It's time to really treat myself like the new version of myself. Now, that might still feel a little shaky um, and uncertain because Jupiter at four is a little shaky, I think. So there's there are good moments and there are old moments. So you might go bef go between the old and the new. So be open to yourself and the fact that um, there's some days when you're feeling like the brand new and there's some days where you're starting to feel pulled by the old. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not succeeding. I find with spiritual change, we have to sort of break away from the old and we sort of get pulled back in, sort of like bubble gum on our shoe. We sort of get pulled back in. And I think Jupiter 4 does call for that. So. It's not an overnight flip the light switch on, but Jupiter does move to five degrees um, through this week. And once Jupiter hits five degrees, which is on um, Thursday, when Jupiter hits five degrees on Thursday, we now realize and understand conceptually the way we need to respond to ourselves. So there's a there's like working through the old way and the new way of responding to yourself up until Thursday. And then come Thursday, you know what it has to be. You're really ready to respond to yourself in that new way. And ready to uh, and ready to treat yourself energetically inside of yourself from this new source of strength, and that's what Jupiter and Aries is building: a new belief in your strength, a new belief in your capability. Um, which means that there might have been moments where you felt the old way was broken down, so you could have this new way break through. Now Mars, the ruler of Aries, goes from eight degrees this week to twelve degrees. Mars is the actionizer, so Mars is what makes us move forward and and take action in our life and move forward with what we intend to do. So this is another reason why I think this week things really start to go forward in our life because Mars is going from eight until 12 degrees. Those degrees are pretty much from your inner self to your outer life. So you're gonna to start to feel your strength coming up from your inner self and realizing that you now have this motivation inside yourself to make these changes. Mars at eight says you're gonna be committed at the beginning of the week to make these changes. And then by the end of the week when Mars hits 12 degrees, you're now ready to expand out in the world and take the strength into the world. The same energy of Mars can also be described as cutting energy, where we're cutting away from the old. And so you will probably have to cut out uh, old actions with yourself or behaviors with yourself or cut away from old commitments you had to yourself. Mars at eight is, can be considered old commitments that you once had. Get rid of those old commitments and, and forward now onto the new commitments. And then Mars at 12 degrees, cutting away from the old beliefs about daily life and now moving towards a new belief about daily life. So I think a lot of, um, ch of literal change of action, of behavior, of responses and action moving forward, seeing things actually happen that we've been maybe waiting on for a long time, but we finally now have the ability to act on it and do it. Chiron in Aries is at 15 degrees this week. And one thing interesting is the sun will sextile Chiron on Monday. The sun in Gemini at 15 degrees is our heart opening up and accepting this new attitude on life, this new strategy for life. Uh, Chiron at 15 is us now healing and accepting a new behavior with ourselves and a new behavior with the world. So how we, it's always with ourselves because it's our motivation on the underside, but it's also how we behave with the world and how we respond to the world. So we sort of, um, again, this is 15 degrees. 15 is daily life. This is the things that happen in life. This is the strategy of life. So I think we come to terms this week, um, Chiron really says, okay, I can really now accept, I can accept um, the way I need to respond in life or the way I need to behave in life. I can accept uh, mistakes I've made in the past in daily life so that I can move on to the new potential of daily life. 
So I think there's a, uh, a lot of acceptance, a lot of self-acceptance that happens early in the week with the sun sextiling Chiron. And Chiron is also the healing agent. So it's how we heal. It's how we embrace ourselves um, on a, as far as integrity is concerned. And so I think we start the week really feeling capable of what our behavior can do in the world and what we can do in the world, which is another reason why I think we can really commit to a strategy this week. We can commit to that strategy uh, because we feel so capable with the sun sextiling Chiron. And with Chiron at 15, we're accepting what things are, we're accepting uh, what has been, and we're accepting what can be. Net, net six, step 15, net six is really the acceptance of. So again, I think it's a very fluid week coming up as far as strategy and where we're heading because this energy in Aries is really pushing us to move forward. And that sextile that happens on Monday, I think really aligns the mind with the can-do energy <clears throat> and the healing also possible uh, from old behaviors, old responses, old ego issues. So you could say in a simple way, our ego is finally over the fact that it didn't go right once upon a time. And our ego can accept that. And so by accepting it, you can now get onto the new path. A lot of times what holds us up, especially me, <laughs> I have to say, is is the is ego is that our pride uh, us wanting to be doing it right us wanting to always um, put our best foot out there and the times where that didn't happen that sort of pulls on us and hesitates our ability to move forward uh, the sun sextile and chiron i think on monday sort of clears out that hesitation and gives us an ability to move forward feeling confident so that's aries energy saturn has retrograded at 25 aquarius um, and this does mean that a lot of the weight on our shoulders in order to take responsibility with something or uh, weight on our shoulders to have to be the authority of something, or perhaps you were having a little bit of a conflict with power or taking your authority. Saturn now retrograde, which happens the day this show goes live, I think is taking the weight off of our shoulders. And we're now we're gonna start to see the effects of all of the responsibility that we were taking for ourselves since Saturn uh, went direct. So Saturn will be uh, retrograde until October 23rd, and so we will, and it goes back to 18 degrees once it uh, goes, that's the final degree it gets to before it stations direct on October 23rd. So what that means is that we're now rethinking with Saturn at 25, we're rethinking what's my spiritual responsibility in this matter going forward and all the way back to, okay, what action am I going to take? But what it means on a practical sense this week is we don't feel like we have to be anything or have to do anything, I think, because that Saturn retrograde really takes some of the pressure off and helps us feel better. And of course, Pluto is retrograde at 28 degrees. I've already spoken to that. Um, the most powerful transit of Pluto this week will be Mercury trining Pluto on Friday, June 10th. And when Mercury trines Pluto, that is again when our mind is committing to manifesting a new future uh, manifestation goal. And that means that we're going to go ahead and work that out with a control issue or a power issue with Pluto retrograding in Capricorn. So we sort of um, realize that you know, I'm not going to have to be the one, you know, filing the paperwork anymore. I'm not gonna have to be the one driving the car, or I'm going to go ahead and give this over to God. I'm going to surrender this over to God and not try to be in control. But I, I think this Mercury trining Pluto is a final understanding of power because of course the sun trined Pluto prior to this. And so now the mind is realizing and the mind is, is embracing whatever this power shift was. And that happens on Friday. So on Friday, when the sun's at 19 degrees, we um, we are now manifesting this new strategy. And at that same point of manifesting the strategy, our mind is clear, Mercury at 28, of what we're going to manifest as far as long-term um, manifestation goals of the material, Taurus. And we're sure and clear with Mercury trining Pluto how that's going to change power or authority here on the planet. And given that there's such high degrees, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have some sort of headlines where there's a change in corporations or a change of government, some sort of change of organizational power as well on Earth, seeing, seeing that as well. Um, all right. Now, looking at Black Moon Lilith this week, she goes from step five to step six. So we're facing fears around how we think of ourselves and certain mindsets with ourselves. So any fear or trauma with your mindset with yourself, then she moves to step six degrees cancer, which is us facing fears of our relationship to ourselves, which is our rapport, how we look at ourselves in the mirror, basically how we uh, relate to ourselves, and what I call the me ridge. So uh, facing fears this week of how we think of ourselves and how we relate to ourselves all together. I will give you a little, um, you know, teaser and uh, that the sun, the new moon at the end of the month actually conjoins black moon lilt at eight degrees. The new moon is at seven 
black moon Lilith is at eight degrees. So one of the big things that changes this month is that we completely work through this emotional fear with ourselves. And by the end of the month with that new moon at seven degrees, conjuncting black moon Lilith at eight, we have faced whatever that fear is with ourselves. So if you've been facing something inside of yourself, I want to tell you that it's going to be healed this month. If it's an emotional fear or if it's a trauma that you've experienced with yourself, it's going to emotionally heal this month. And so this week, you sort of are working on the mind thought, the thoughts around that, the mindset around whatever that fear is or that trauma is that you're healing from. Uh, and then you move into really starting to get into a better, whatever is blocking you from being in a good rapport with yourself and uh, and whatever mirage fears you have that you maybe can't be there for yourself or whatever your your issue is around being there for yourself. We face those fears this week. So with the Black Moon Lilith in Cancer, again, to be, I think, healed by the end of the month or let's say addressed by the end of the month. It's when the sun crosses Black Moon Lilith, uh, which is at literally at the end of the month. That's when I think our heart fully embraces it. And she starts to move into the next decade, next month in July. So with the moon schedule this week, let's take a look at the moon. Um, the moon starts in Leo on Sunday. So our heart is, it's really much about our heart on Sunday. Then on Monday and Tuesday, we're sort of feeling reality and manifesting reality and what things will become. So the moon in uh, Virgo is, everything becomes very real on step 15, 16, and part of 17. So really feeling the reality of things and um you know, health, if you have issues with health and you have issues with healing your body, that would come up between Monday and probably Tuesday. Then the moon moves into Libra, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I think those days are going to be us sort of weighing back and forth what it is that we want. And while the moon is in Libra and we're weighing back and forth what it is we want and what is fair, that's when the sun is at 17, 18, and 19 degrees, which means that our heart is now committing, acting, and manifesting this new strategy. So, um, the moon is very much in sync with the intentions. You know, when we're when it's step 14 on Sunday, it's what our heart really feels we belong. And then 15 and 16 and 17 is really when we're opening up to what it can become. And then the moon in Libra is sort of finessing that final formula. And then the moon ends in Scorpio on Saturday. So emotions on Saturday will be um, us drawing a line between, I think, emotionally the old strategy. Our life was heading one way, and now we feel our life is heading another. So we emotionally process this week, I think that the commitment to the strategy, and we also emotionally process that there's a, there's a change now, that we're stepping away from the old strategy and we're now embracing the new strategy. All right, and now let's do our day-by-day play-by-play of the days of the week so we can sort of understand how to maximize each day, starting with Sunday. Sunday is cloudy and pensive. This is a Grandmaster Day. Gemini is the ruling energy of the day because Gemini is step 14 at five. So we're now ready to think differently and to um, start to approach our life with a new mindset. The moon is in Leo on Sunday. And so really Sunday is about your heart getting behind a new future that you want, your mind getting behind a new attitude that you want. Um, Mars is at eight degrees Aries. So you're also committing to a way of treating yourself and a way of behaving with yourself. So I think Sunday is really a day of sort of getting everything in order, your mind, your heart and your behavior with yourself. So everything gets aligned and with and in order with those three. And on Sunday, you're ready to kind of go forward with that inner command of being clear with yourself and being ready to um, to act on what's necessary inside yourself with Mars at step eight. So I think Sunday is a very empowering day. It's a very thought provoking day. Um, and I think your mind will come to some realizations on Sunday that um, that might surprise you actually, just because because we're coming into this new story with ourselves, I think a lot of the realizations that we're having are surprising realizations. They're, they're realizations that we did not see coming. Um, and I've noticed that as well. It's, you know, that it is because it truly is a new chapter in our life. And so we're dealing with truly new energy and new, new ways of thinking. Monday. Monday is sunny and accepting. So on Monday, our heart is opening up now and starting to accept, okay, well, here's what's possible. So is it possible that I can have this new strategy? Can I really go this route? Can I really think of it this way? Can I really approach the matter from this perspective? So on Monday, we really start to, our heart is weighing back and forth. What is, what is possible? Can I really begin to um, accept these new ideas? Remember the sun also sextiles Chiron on Monday. So we really start to accept this new way of thinking along with a new way of behaving. So coordinating thinking and behaving together on Monday as well. And really realizing that if I accept this new, uh, this new strategy, well, then I can also accept this new behavior. I can let go of what hasn't worked 
and I can embrace what can work. So I think there's a lot of accepting going on on Monday. And to some degree, that's a healing day. The moon is in Virgo. So we're kind of looking at every, we're feeling every crack in the pavement. We're feeling everything that's out of place. We're feeling where we need to come into alignment. So we're feeling sort of um, where a healing needs to be. And there, that might be one of the challenges of the day actually is that we, um, is that we do feel things not quite perfect. And we deal with, you know, we try to, you know, go forward anyways with non-judgment and compassion. So I would say, you know, part of the acceptance is accepting yourself and accepting where things can go and how things will go for yourself. Tuesday. Tuesday is cloudy and spiritual. On Tuesday, step 16 rules the day. So we're opening up to our intuition. We're opening up to our spiritual self. We're intuitively sort of aligning our story to a higher narrative and to a higher story. Um, we are also in the same day bringing in our intuitive sense and bringing in our intuitive se self. So where everything is very logical with the sun in Gemini, now you have your intuitive self, you have your spiritual self coming in. And so you might find that you're making some adjustments that you're ultimately um, tweaking the plan or tweaking the strategy because your intuition is telling you, hey, you know what, the mind had a good idea, but this is actually perhaps the way to look at it or the way to express it. So we now uh, intuitively start to um, uh, trans, you know, transform and update our thinking and our strategy based on what we're feeling intuitively. Step 16 is also because it's sort of a cloudy day and it's sort of balanced because it's very cloudy with the step 16 net sevens. We're feeling that spiritual energy, but the moon in Virgo is grounding us. The moon in Virgo is making things real. The moon in Virgo is helping us to realize what that spiritual truth is going to be. So it's not just being up in the clouds and feeling the spirit. It's also really becoming, feeling what this will become, feeling what this will turn into. So I think it's a real strong spectrum day in the sense that you'll intuitively understand where you need to go. You'll make some corrections to your thinking. You'll make some realizations of your spiritual story, but it'll be real. It'll be very hard grounded and real with the moon in Virgo, a realization of what's possible um, and, and becoming what can be possible at the same time. So I think Tuesday is a spiritual day. It's a spiritual learning day. And I think intuition corrects course on Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday is sunny and deciding. This is the day when you're going to commit now to a new direction. This is where your plans for your strategy become quite clear. So you're going to decide and, and clarify the direction you want to go. Um, I think you're going to be able to make cl clear decisions. You'll certainly know what's not going to work on Wednesday. You certainly know what you can't do on Wednesday. Uh, and on that same sense with the moon in um, Virgo and then Libra, you start to weigh what that is going to mean and you start to weigh how that can unfold. So um, on Wednesday, you're making that commitment uh, and you're ready to move forward. But at the same time, uh, with the moon in Virgo and Libra, you're also um, realizing what that's going to become. And the moon in Libra, you're sort of weighing what it means for yourself on the inside. So one thing interesting about uh, Wednesday is Mercury goes to 27 Taurus, which means that the mind now, Mercury has finally moved out of step 26, which is where it's stationed at. So we were looking at committing for a long time to this long-term perspective for a very long time. With Mercury at 27, we're now ready to move on those plans. So remember, we had been committed before. Now we can move on those plans. Now we can uh, go forward with whatever those plans are. So um, I think one thing about making that commitment is you're ready to act. You're, you know what you're committing to as far as strategy, but you're now ready to take action. You're ready to make it happen. You're ready to follow through with understanding and ideas. So that's uh, on Wednesday. Thursday. Sunny and changing on Thursday. This is the day when you now take action and you're ready to put these plans into motion. So this is the day where you actually sign the contract, have the conversation, negotiate the deal. The moon in Libra is going to allow you to make it fair, go back and forth. What's what's necessary, what's not necessary. Um, there's going to be a lot of action hyper energy with the sun being ruled by Mars. So Mars plays an important role on this day. Mars is at step 11. So it's calling for us to come into our integrity inside of ourselves. So this is not just taking action with the plans. This is coming into your true integrity, coming into what's possible for yourself as well. Uh, so now you energetically um, on Thursday are ready to act and ready to move. I think Thursday is probably the busiest day of the week. It's the day where you're gonna see the most action and activity. And it's the day where you wanna stop certain things as well. If you had some strategy going forward, now you probably stop that strategy and hold off. Uh, so if you want to, if you're ending something, if you're ending an agreement, or if you're ending a connection, because Gemini is also connections, that would happen on Thursday. You'd end those connections on Thursday. And then it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Friday is sunny and creating. And on 
uh, Friday, we're now moving forward to manifest whatever these plans are, which means you're loving and holding space that it's going to happen. So you're, you're loving that it's going to happen. You're, you're acting on what you want to have happen. You're acting on the right approach for things to happen. You are keeping those motions going forward, whatever you have agreed to, whatever you decide to go with. So you're, you're holding space. One of the hardships of 19 degrees is that um, we tend to want to maybe give up or we tend to want to turn back or second guess. So on Friday, don't second guess, hold off. Friday is also where Mercury trines Pluto at 28 degrees. So our mind is committed to that long-term manifestation while at the same time, we're letting go of a power structure, we're letting go of, of a transformation of, um, uh, we're, we're allowing things to transform in another part of our life so that we can manifest this new direction. So Friday is a big day of, I think it actually happening. So you start to see it's, it's happening. It's really happening. I'm really seeing my, these plans go forward. I'm really seeing this attitude pay off. And I'm feeling a shift of power with Mercury trining Black Moon Lilith. The moon is still in Libra. So we're sort of kind of trying to keep the plane level and trying to keep things fair. Uh, and I think also that's a balance as well. Keeping our mind balanced, not letting our mind go to the wrong, you know, steering off course with the right attitude. I mean, after all, Taurus, excuse me, Gemini is our mindset and our thinking and our attitude. So I think part of Friday's test is keeping that attitude fair and balanced. And that means fair to yourself and, and fair to the world. So Friday is a creative day, but Friday is also a bit of a tested day because you're now moving forward with what you've been working on all week. And, and this is the point of probably no return. Now that you're going down this path, um, it's time to go you know, full heartedly and not look back. And then we have Saturday. Saturday is cloudy and sensitive. Uh, on Saturday, cloudy and sensitive means that we are gonna be feeling everything coming up. We're gonna be feeling uh, the whole week. So our feelings come into play. This is a big deal. The moon is in Scorpio, so we're probably feeling everything to the core. We're feeling everything to the very edge or to the bone. And what we're doing is we're sort of emotionally dividing the two worlds. So as we spent the whole week coming up with this new strategy and the whole week coming up with this um, new way of thinking and this new deal or whatever this new manifestation is, Saturday is about like f realizing that the f my feelings for the old now need to go and I need to embrace and protect my feelings for the future. So with the sun at 20 degrees, we're starting to feel all these changes where it's been mostly intellectual with Gemini and it's been mostly um, logical and, you know, all in our mind with Gemini. Now we start to feel what this means. So our feelings sort of catch up to us on Saturday. This is why I think it's going to be a sensitive day. On the same day, Venus conjoins Uranus on this day. So we open up and we also are accepting that our spiritual story is elevating with Uranus at 16 degrees that we're now... Uh, embracing this new spiritual story and embracing this new spiritual story we were born to live and letting go from the story we were born to. So I think Venus conjoining Uranus um, sort of adds some of the energy of step 20 and why it's a sensitive day because we're really feeling these changes. We're really feeling between worlds and we're really feeling that we're not in Kansas anymore. So I think uh, it's going to be a sensitive day, but it's going to be a day where you are feeling the divide finally and starting to feel the change. So the mind can guess. That's the thing about Gemini. The mind goes back and forth. Is it really true? Is it really going to happen? Um, once you start to feel it, you know, in fact, it is happening or it's not happening. So I think come Saturday, you realize it's happening. All right. So that is the day by day, play by play. Now I'm sure we want to talk about and you want to know, how does this week affect you? So my friend, go steep yourself some tea and let's have our weekly tea time. Hello, my friend. Welcome to our Tea Time Horoscope. This week's Tea Time topic is Venus crosses Uranus, opening to higher values. Cheers. As I mentioned earlier in this first segment, this week, one of the big aspects that's really important is Venus crossing Uranus, which happens on Saturday, the day this show actually goes live. In fact, Venus moving through the spectrum of Taurus is us really opening up to this new manifestation potential that I've been talking about. And it's sort of the full circle of what we started back in May. In fact, you could say that the Venus Uranus conjunction really began on Cinco de Mayo when the sun crossed Uranus at step 15. That was when our heart began to open up in general to the new spiritual story. Now with Venus crossing Uranus at step 16, our heart opens up to the literal spiritual story because 16 nets to a seven. So this ultimately is us moving through our value space consciousness, our manifestation potential, and us opening up to a higher spiritual calling or the story you were born to live. 
And I believe that is one of the big parts of this week's progress. Now, this week also, the sun moves from step 14, Gemini, to step 20, Gemini. And on Tuesday, the sun will actually semi-sextile Uranus at 16 degrees. So on Tuesday, as we're moving through our new strategy, our new attitude, our new plans for the future, the sun in Gemini, we coordinate those plans on Tuesday when the sun semi-sextiles Uranus with the new spiritual story. So when you put this all together, the big real payout of this week is the fact that we move forward with this new strategy for life, this strategy in our mind in Gemini, our communication, our literal intellectual plans, etc. We move forward with this strategy. At the same time, we move forward with our manifestation potential. So for each of the 12 signs today, I'm going to talk about this new strategy, the sun in Gemini. I'm going to talk about Venus crossing Uranus, but I'm also going to talk about Mercury, which reaches step 28 Taurus, the grand master step of Taurus, and will trine Pluto at 28 degrees Capricorn retrograde, which will be a moment that happens on Friday, the day before Venus crosses Uranus, where you will commit mentally to a grand manifestation plan, and you will coordinate that to the transformation of some sort of power or control with Pluto and Capricorn. So for each of the 12 signs, we're going to talk about where the sun is laying out a new strategy in Gemini for your life and what part of your life you're laying out that strategy. Mercury, where you're making new plans for manifestation now that Mercury is uh, direct and moving forward. How that trines to Pluto, where you're transforming your power and how that manifestation will turn to a transformation of power. And then finally, on Saturday, when Venus crosses Uranus, how you're opening up to a higher spiritual vision of, uh, of your life and in what area of your life. And as always, I'll put to the side here, which are the astrological signs I'm talking about. I recommend you look up your sun sign first and your rising sign second, starting with the Aries. Aries is, or Air I, are moving this week from a new strategy of thinking and communication. So your heart is literally laying out a strategy for planning, a strategy for maybe intellectual property that you want to make. Perhaps you're drafting up a contract. Perhaps you are coming up with a master communication, like a speech or something. So it's a new strategy for intellect, communication, and um, interaction with others. Because also connection, literal connection to people or siblings is also a part of it too with the sun in Gemini. So connecting to basically uh, others intellectually or with communication or strategy as well. So as you move through with this new strategy for life, Mercury in Taurus says you're now going to manifest uh, a new plan for money and abundance. So how you're going to manifest uh, in a big picture, and that's going to tie to transforming your power with career and legacy. So you're, you're coordinating the change of money and manifestation to career and legacy, and that could also be retirement plans. Then on Saturday, when Venus crosses Uranus, you'll then open up now to a new strategy or a new approach to money and productivity. So you'll have overall new values with money. So for Gemini's, you're moving forward with plans and thinking. You are committing to long-term abundance and manifestation that ties to career legacy. And you're opening up to higher spiritual values of money and productivity at large. Taurus. Taurus is now are coming up with a new strategy for business, money, and productivity. So now you are you are with your heart creating this new strategy for how you want to manifest and be productive. This is my, maybe a particular product that you're working on, a literal product or a project that you're working on. So a new strategy for this product or productization. With Mercury in your sign of Taurus, you're going to be committing to a new character and a new image, a new direction that your character is going, uh, an improved version of your character now that Mercury has retrograded. And this new character is tied to a change of power of life purpose and meaning. So how you're, what is meaningful in life and what is purposeful in life your, or your belief structure where it's pointing, this is now going to be transformed uh, in a different way or changing the boundaries. And with Venus crossing Uranus, you're going to open up to a higher spiritual vision and higher values or the story you're born to live when it comes to all behavior and responses to others. So how you respond to others and how you interact with others. So for Taurus is a new strategy for money, a new vision of character and image that ties to life purpose and opening up to a higher spiritual uh, calling when it comes to your behavior and your responses to others. Gemini. Gemini's are now moving forward with a new strategy of behavior and responses to others. So how you interact with others, this is a new way of interacting. This is a new way of responding to others. Your heart is coming up with a new strategy for how you interact. 
with Mercury and Taurus training Pluto and Capricorn, you're now going to um, have new strategy or new plans for your relationship to God and destiny. So the way you relate to God, there's a new manifestation for your, your faith and your connection to faith. And this ties to a boundary transformation of where you draw boundaries in life that lead to a life transformation. So it's, it's new faith that you have that leads to new boundaries of how to change your life. And when Venus crossing Uranus, you're now opening up to a higher spiritual vision of spirituality, faith, and karma. So your spiritual story, basically, it's taken to a higher level. So for Gemini's, it's new strategy for behavior, a new manifestation of your relationship to God tied to a transformation of, of life through boundaries, and you opening up to a higher spiritual vision of spirituality in general, karma, or soulmates as well. Soulmates is a part of that that counts. Cancers. Cancers are now coming up with a new strategy for spirituality, karma, and soulmates. So you're now going to open up now for new plans of how to face karma or how to process karma or how to interact with soulmates or go to the next page with soulmates as far as whatever that chapter may be. With Mercury and Taurus, you're reaching now a higher manifestation potential or a new manifestation for your social ambition. And your social ambition is uh, uh, trining or connecting to a transformation of power in long-term relationships. So how you relate to people over time, that's gonna transform in your power and it's tied to that social ambition. And with Venus crossing Uranus, you're now opening up to a new spiritual vision of your social reputation and your relationships or friendships. Leos. Leos are now coming up with a new strategy and a new operation for their social reputation and their friendships. So how they put themselves out there, how they relate to them, uh, other people out there, the way people see you, the way you interact with people, it's a new strategy for basically your social world and your social life. With Mercury and Taurus, you're now gonna manifest a new vision for your legacy, your career, and your retirement. So how do you wanna go long-term in career? And this is going to tie into a transformation of your lifestyle, that your life has to change, something in your daily uh, routines has to change, or what you put your power in day to day in life will actually change. So a connection between your big plans for career and legacy and changing your power in, in uh, performance or daily lifestyle. And with Venus crossing Uranus on Saturday, you're going to open up now. Uh, to a higher spiritual vision of your career and your legacy or parenting and leadership. So where you see career going is now going to the next spiritual chapter or the next chapter of your story. Virgos. Virgos are now coming up with a new strategy for leadership and career. So what you plan to do as far as decision making, parenting, any type of leadership, any type of career strategy, this is what you're coming up with a new strategy for is how you uh, are going to plan for your basically future and future life direction. So how you direct your future in essence, but career is most often the most popular uh, with, uh, with uh, retirement being the biggest goal at the end. With Mercury in the high degrees of Taurus, you're now going to have new plans for your life's purpose and a new strategy for what you wanna manifest in your life's purpose. And this is gonna to tie to the transformation of power in personal dreams. So how you see your personal dreams changing, what you give your power to, what you put your time and energy into as far as romance, creativity, what I call the golden egg project, what your heart really wants to manifest in the end. So uh, it's, a, it's a tie of purpose, meaning personal dreams. And where you are now opening up to a higher spiritual vision in your life is with education uh, and wisdom. So, no, excuse me. It's going to actually be, um, no, that's correct, actually. Sorry, I went off there. Personal dreams. Got talk, got saw, got, th got thrown off there for a second. Um, where you're going to actually move up to a, a higher vision is education and wisdom. P pardon me for that one. So for Virgos, just to re-educate and say it again, you're coming up with a new strategy for leadership and career, where your career and le leadership is heading. You're now going to manifest a new life purpose and meaning, and this life purpose is tied to personal dreams and what your heart is really wanting. So making a transformation of power, of what you put your heart into. And then the uh, new spiritual vision is with your education and your wisdom. I got thrown off there because of personal dreams. Thank you, Virgo. Libras. Libras are now coming up with a new strategy for their education and wisdom. So where you want to educate yourself, uh, where you want to travel, what your belief structure is about where to go in life, um, you know, as far as um, the path of learning that you want to do or the path of uh, experience that you want to do. So really coming up with a new strategy for how you want to educate and go down a certain path in life, a certain way of thinking and a certain philosophy is another way of putting it. So coming up with a new philosophy of life. 
where Mercury and Taurus is setting up to manifest in a bigger level is you're going to now do a life transformation. So your mind now is planning a long term manifestation of changing your life, changing what you want to do in life, um, changing your personal boundaries in life and your comfort zones in life. So making a life, a basically a life change by changing boundaries. And that is tied now to transforming your power with emotional security. So what you would put your security into, what you normally feel secure about, how you feel comfortable in your own skin, it's a transformation of life and a transformation of your power um, as far as what you feel secure with. And with Uranus and Venus conjoining on Saturday, you're now going to innovate to the next spiritual level, your boundaries with other people. So boundaries of other people now go to the story you're born to live, according to the needs of the story you're, going, you're born to live. And this could also be boundaries with things and, and, um, and situations as well. So literally, it could be literally you changing the fences around your house to the story you're born to live. Scorpios. Scorpios are now coming up with a new strategy for their boundaries with other people. So where you draw the line with people, where you draw the line with things, where you draw the line with time and space. So how much time and space you put into something or don't put into something. So this is you creating a new comfort zone uh, around everything in life and a new strategy for where that comfort zone happens to be. With Mercury at 28 degrees Taurus, you're now coming up with new plans for long-term relationships, how relationships will manifest in the long-term and uh, the long-term goals for your own personal achievement. So this is um, where you personally will take it to self-mastery. So potentials for self-mastery and potentials for mastering in relationships. And that connection to relationships is trining a transformation of power of your big attitudes on life or intellectual properties on life. So how you, what you create with your mind, the long-term plans you have with your mind, you're transforming your power of what you put your mind into in the big picture of things. And with Venus crossing Uranus, you're now going to open up to a higher spiritual vision of long-term relationships in general and relationships to everything in life. So basically, it's time to take relationships to the story you were born to live. Sagittariuses. Sagittariuses are now coming up with a new strategy for relationships in general. Who you relate with, how you relate, what the rules of relationships are, um, what you share. Uh, how you, the space you have, the balance of it, the harmony. So it's a new strategy intellectually for long-term relationships. With Mercury in Taurus at 28 degrees, you're going to come up with a new vision for your performance in life, where you want to perform, how you want to perform, the way you go about performing. So a new mindset about performance in life. That mindset of performance in life is tying to a transformation of money abundance and manifestation so what you put your long-term money investments into and what your plans are for abundance so transforming where power is given or taken or where the boundaries are with power when it comes to money and manifestation tied to lifestyle and performance and where venus is crossing uranus is moving up to the story you were born to live when it comes to your daily work and your lifestyle so moving into the story of where you are headed in work and lifestyle according to that new story and elevating your values in daily work and lifestyle to the story the spiritual story you were born to live capricorns capricorns are now coming up with a new strategy for daily work and lifestyle so this is a new way of working maybe the equipment you work with maybe the work hours maybe your um, routines at work this is all moving now to a new a new strategy for how you want to do this and the direction you want to go with mercury and taurus at 28 degrees you're now manifesting a new mindset of personal dreams so where your dreams are going what your heart really wants on the big picture and this is trining into a transformation of what you put your power into with character and image so what your character is focused on, what your image is focused on, you're not going to put the same power and the same character goals. You're not going to try to put out the same image. And this is tied to what your heart wants to manifest in the big picture of things. When it comes to opening up to a higher spiritual vision, you're opening up to a higher vision of creativity, romance, and relationship to your children. So taking your inner child and what your inner child relates to creatively, romantically, or also with children, this now goes up to the story you were born to live and to the next spiritual chapter when it comes to creativity and inner child uh, personal, personal manifestations of creativity. Aquarius. Aquariuses are coming up with a new strategy for creativity and romance. So this new strategy for what you create, um, what you put your time and energy into manifest as far as love is concerned. This is also perhaps romantic uh, connections of the heart. And this is also relationship to children as well. The new strategy with your children, new strategy um, to interact with your children. With Mercury and Taurus at 28 degrees, you're now manifesting a new vision 
of emotional security. So a new, a new definition of what will make you emotionally secure, what will ground you, make you feel grounded at the end of the day. This is trining into uh, Pluto at 28 degrees, which means you're transforming your power about what you have long-term faith in or your connection to the angels, the ascended masters, God, or destiny. So it is a vision of emotional security relating to uh, God, destiny, and relationship to higher self and higher spirit. Where Venus crosses Uranus on Saturday, you're going to open up now to a, a new spiritual story when it comes to your home, your family, or your emotional foundation. So the story you're born to live when it comes to uh, the way you live and how you feel comfortable in your own skin, home, family, and what I call foundation. And then the Pisces. Pisces are coming up with a new strategy for home, family, and foundation. So a new way for how you emotionally ground, a new way for how you connect, uh, how you ground yourself, how you feel comfortable in your own skin, literal home situation, like where you live, and your family situation as well, the members of your family. So a new strategy for home, family, and foundation, which is a mental strategy, of course, because it's Gemini. With Mercury and Taurus at 28 degrees, you're now making new plans with your big picture of, of attitude and life. So the way you think about things in the long term, this is um, this is also your strategy for long term, your plans for long term. This is also intellectual property or something that you would make with your mind. So creating something of intellectual value with your mind. And this trines into Pluto and Capricorn, which is a transformation of power with your social ambition and your social reputation. So somehow your attitude is tied to transforming your power in society or transforming your power when it comes to your social intentions at the end of the day. And with Venus crossing Uranus on Saturday, you're now opening up to a new spiritual story when it comes to the way you talk to yourself, your dialogue and your logic. So basically the way you think day to day and the way you communicate day to day, this is moving to a higher spiritual vision. All right, that is the essence of all 12 signs and what Venus crossing Uranus will do as well as Mercury and Pluto in Capricorn. I do have a couple of announcements before we go. First is, if you're not familiar, I have a personal sensei service called Serious Joy, located at SeriousJoy.com. This service takes your natal chart information and delivers a custom uh, life coaching service based on your natal information. It's sent to your phone or email every day. There's a daily audio pep talk, which is about a 30 minute podcast with me talking about the planets. We do some prayer, we do some breath work, we do some chanting, we focus on our telepathy game. And there's other features as well, including the self-study hall astrology class. Right now what's playing in the self-study hall is Jupiter and Aries. We're talking about where Jupiter and Aries will be in 2022. And we lay that out in the members charts. We actually answer four questions from our members and use their chart to answer the question. So, uh, in, on top of that, we're talking about where Jupiter and Aries will fall in their chart. And we also have a weekly spiritual talk show called the Soul Support Group. This is a talk show that comes out on Wednesday. This week, our topic is getting your mind to work with you. We have astrologer Robbie Hunt returning, and she'll be looking at aspects of your chart to help you empower yourself uh, intellectually and get your mind to work for you instead of you working for your mind. If you're a subscriber and you'd like to be a part of that, just navigate to the Soul Support Group main page, click on the link to apply, fill out the form, and we'll send you a confirmation email that we got your submission. Also, if you're not familiar, I do have a year scope, basically a countdown 2022 webinar. This was recorded in January, where I go into all 12 months and digest for you what's going to happen in every month, as well as the broader themes of the year. It comes with immediate access to the video, and it also comes with um, a, a downloadable PDF workbook, basically, that comes with it, 112 pages of all the charts that you need to know for the year and all the major aspects. If you'd like to know more, visit wateki.live. And again, that's available immediately upon purchase. And as always, sharing is caring. Most people find me from someone, a friend or a family member that suggests me to them. So I want to say thank you to those who have suggested me. I also want to say thank you to those who have donated. Some people donate or tip their sensei. If you would like to donate or uh, tip your sensei, visit paypal.me forward slash sensei Christopher or on PayPal, just use the email address of sensei Christopher at wateki.me. We're also on Facebook if you're not familiar. Uh, Facebook has a club that we call the Serious Joy Club. You're allowed to come in the club, and if you are a light worker and you have personal services, you're allowed to advertise your services in this club. So it's a great little place for spiritual people. The only rule we have is that we don't want to have any politics discussed in the club. To come to the Facebook club, visit SeriousJoy.club. 
And then if you like to follow me on social media, I put out a daily Zodiac weather. It's a summary of the day. It has an emoticon. It has a summary of what's going on and a pretty picture. All you have to do is follow me on one of my social medias and you'll see it come up in your feed. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Chris Witecki. On Instagram, I am at Sensei Christopher. On YouTube, it's Serious Joy TV. Please be kind and do subscribe. Hit the bell button so you're notified. And if you'd rather listen instead of watch, I'm on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. All right, my friends, I think it's going to be a very good week of coming into a new strategy. As I mentioned, I think this is the week when things start to move forward and we start to see progress and the results of 2022. I'll see you next week with more. Until then, remember, I love you. Live, love, be.